Hey guys, let's do some more helicopter logistics in the hip. So we're back online on the Persian Gulf at War server, and last time we looked at how to capture airfields and how that furthers our goal of the map progression. This time we're going to look at how we defend airfields that we already own. So if I bring up the WebGCI again, you can see that we basically own the peninsula at this point. Aside from Fujaira and these three here that you can capture next to Eldafra any time, we are all the way up to Kassab. And if we zoom in again, that means that our next push is over to Kesham Island, Kesham Farp, and then finally Bandar Abbas. But if we want to do that, we need to be able to hold Kassab as our forward spawn point for our slow movers and our logistics planes. To do that, we've got to be able to defend against all of these red airplanes that you can see coming in from up north in Iran and already crossing the strait. They're going to try to destroy anything we have on the ground here and basically take this airfield back from us and then we're going to be pushed back to our previous spawn, which would be either Farp Charlie in this area if we own it, or Al Minad way down here. And we would have to re-push for Kassab, so it's in our best interest to defend it. And this is where the other half of the logistics role comes into play. Alright, so we are at Kassab, and there's a logistics point right behind us there with the green smoke. And basically what we're going to do is just continually spawn crates there and carry them to wherever we want to have them around the airfield to protect it. We can spawn a number of different things. We can have IR SAMs, we can have radar SAMs, we can have AAA, we can have fuel and ammo trucks, we can have a whole bunch of different things. And we're going to try to put a few different things up that will hopefully defend the airfield so that it's a safe place for us to spawn. So here comes Vespid and his Huey. Pretty sure that's who that is anyway. He's going to land near the, near the point here. See, so you don't even have to be that close. You could be a fair distance away. He's going to spawn a crate. And hover up over top of it. Away he goes. He's going to go deliver that to somewhere, wherever he thinks is appropriate for it, whatever it happens to be. And he's going to go drop and unpack it over there. So we're going to do much the same. So first of all, I guess we should talk about what we need to spawn. So if we open up our menu, and go into F10 for other. I'll do this with a mouse so you can see. F10 for other, F6 for CTLD. Now we have a few different categories. So obviously there's troop transport. We get these for free because we can carry troops and a crate at the same time, so we might as well. We'll grab them, we'll grab anti-air, because that's what we're defending against. And then we're going to go ground uh, into other again, CTLD, and then we'll grab some anti-air stuff. Alright, so in the anti-air category, some of the things that we like. So the, uh, the Avenger SAM is an IR SAM, very handy to have, but fairly close range. If you can get this, you know, on the other side of a, of a mountain or a hill or something where your uh, where the red planes won't be able to see it until they're basically right over top of it that's a great way to go the vulcan i believe that's triple a that's also nice to have with your avenger sams so that anything getting in the area is going to get peppered or shot down hopefully um, the main one though that we care a lot about is the hawk sam this is a, a radar installation hawk sa or a sam site so this is made up of several components and we're going to have to deliver a few crates to deploy one so we need a launcher. Uh, one crate will deploy a cluster of, I believe, five launchers. So we just need one of those. We need a search radar that allows it to identify targets, a track radar that lets it shoot on targets or shoot at targets, and then the PCP, which is the control center. So once we have four crates, we deploy all four to a single area and then unpack them all at the same time. That will deploy a Hawk site to the field. The repair here is if our, say, our radar gets shot down or blown up, then we can repair the entire site by just dropping one of these and unpacking it near the Hawk site. Um, finally, because this uses ammunition, it will run out of missiles pretty quickly. If we go back to previous menu here, and then under ground forces in F4, we'll have this ammo truck on F5. So if we put an ammo truck somewhere in the area of our Hawk site, it will be able to rearm constantly, and that's a good thing. So. Whatever we deploy, we want to make sure it's either in range of an existing ammo truck or we put another ammo truck down near it. Finally, oops, I accidentally closed that. Oop, 
We did it again. F10, other, CTLD. The red team will send out Frogfoots with anti-radiation missiles to shoot down your Hawk radars, and so the site becomes inoperable just because it's missing your radar. So to deal with that, because the Hawk can't engage incoming missiles, you can set up a few Roland ADS uh, right here on F10. But the special thing about these is you see the number three next to it? That means we need three crates to unpack a single unit. So if we want to set up two, two Rolands, we need to make six trips. If we want to set up three, we need to make nine trips. So you've got basically four trips for your Hawk, plus one for the ammo so it can rearm. So there's five trips. And then to defend it, you need at least another three, probably six more trips. So we're talking about like 11 different trips back and forth to set up a semi-efficient or um, well-protected SAM site. And then if you want to have some... Uh, some Avengers and Vulcans in there as well, like you're pretty easily getting up into 15 or 16 trips. So all of this is to say, don't go too far. Make your trips short because you need to go there and back several times to set up something effective. So let's start with our launcher. Drop that right in front of us and let's go deploy it somewhere. All right, so two stage pull up. I'll put up my controls here. First stage is to get light on wheels and make corrections as needed so that we're relatively stationary. And then our second one is an increase of collective and right anti-torque pedal to lift up off the ground. And that should give us a fairly smooth pull up. And then we can just make our way over to these crates. We need to be a little bit higher. Hover three, two, one. Got it. Okay. So now we're going to just do a little pedal turn here. And we're going to go deploy over there in that little clearing that way. We'll do our best not to crash into the Huey. Just get up and over him a little bit. come in and set ourselves down right over here in the dirt. Alright, now something to be aware of, especially with the launcher site, the launcher crate, is that uh, it will, like I said, when you unpack it, create a cluster of about five launchers. So you have to make sure you put it in an area that has enough space. So if we go F10, F6 for CTLD, F6 again for CTLD commands, and then F2 to drop the crate. Now we won't be able to unpack it. If we try, go F10, F6, F6, and then F1 for unpack, it'll just tell us we can't. And it'll say we're missing the Hawk PCP, the search radar, and the track radar. And now we just uh, make our way back to the logistics site, and we go get the next crate in the list. Again, we don't have to be super close. I'm actually closer than I need to be. So we can just set down right here. Now, again, open our menu, F10, F6 for CTLD, F3 for AA crates. Next one on the list is the search radar on F2, so we'll grab that. Okay, again, two-stage pull-up, light on wheels. And then make our corrections, and up we go. get ourselves hovering up above. We actually have to hover fairly high to pick these things up. Two, one. Nope, we got too far away. We backed away. There it is there. So there's a lot of room for error, but if you back away completely like I did, you'll have to restart. Two, one. All right, got it couple of Hueys here also doing the same thing as us. Now we can do a couple of fun things here. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and hover and drop the crate while I'm hovering. So you don't actually have to set down. I 
And now keep in mind, again, because of that, uh, that one over there is going to deploy into five launchers, we need to leave some space. We also don't want incoming anti-radiation missiles to blow up our launchers if we can help it. We really want the site to survive so that we can repair it. We don't want the whole thing to be blown up so that we have to build a new one. All right, so we get ourselves nice and low. Under, I believe, five meters. Hover nice and low here. Open the menu, F10, F6, F6, and then F2 to drop the crate. And there it goes. And you can actually be a bit higher than that and it'll drop directly below you. But there are limits. I don't know what the exact limit is off the top of my head, but this is quicker because now I don't have to uh, touch down at all. Alright, so here's another fun thing we can do. It's not as practical as I'd like, but it is kind of cool. Is if we spawn a crate and then wait a little while, and just point our nose somewhere else, we can spawn another one. F6, F3 for AA. Um, so that one there is the Hawk Track Radar, and then the last one here is the Hawk PCP. Now, if I wanted to spawn another crate, I could just turn my nose over here, go back into F10, F6, F3, actually, not in this case, I want F4 for ground forces, and then an ammo truck on F5. And it's going to tell me I need to wait. So it's basically a minute between spawns, but if you're going to be sitting on the ground for any reason, maybe waiting for someone or whatever, or if you just want to do it this way, you can wait a minute between spawns. It's going to be slower than just delivering the crate in most cases. But you can do this and set them all up ahead of time. And then once you're ready, all we do is just lift up, hover over one, bring it over, hover to drop it, hover back, hover over this one. We never actually have to set down, and we can drop multiple crates this way without ever actually having to set down. So for the sake of this video, we're going to wait out the timer and spawn the third crate. Two hours later. All right, so there's one, two, and three. So now we can just lift ourselves up pick a crate any crate it doesn't matter which one we're going to start with our ammo truck because we're going to deploy them all at the same time so we have to touch down to spawn new crates we also have to touch down to unpack if we can get everything we need spawned ahead of time we don't have to touch down until we're ready to do the set unpacking get ourselves into a hover there's one. Turn around and let's head over and deploy that. So our ammo truck should be for sure near the launchers, but it's got a pretty wide radius and it honestly doesn't really matter where you put it. If you are thinking about putting in more units, you want to put it in the middle of all of the units you're deploying so they can all rearm from that one ammo truck. But basically, I tend to just, just drop it somewhere near the uh, launchers. Alright, so we're hovering here, and we're just going to F10, F6, F6, and then F2 to drop. And there we go. And now we just head back, and we go grab another one. Alright, so now we don't even have to spawn anything. We don't have to touch down. We just move into position over top of our next crate in the list. ahead, picking one of the buildings ahead of me and just looking at that. And there we go, we're loaded. Left pedal turn away around, let's get out of the way of this guy's crate. We don't want to interfere with him. Alright, something you might want to do, because this can be hard to Come in and set yourself in for a hover and then stay in position and manage everything while also going through your radio menus uh, would be to set that up in voice attack. If you happen to have voice attack, which I do, but I'm not using right now, um, you could set that up to have a drop crate command and then you would be able to just get yourself into position, say drop crate, and it would be a lot easier than trying to navigate the menus while hovering a helicopter. You can see me being pretty wobbly there. All right, so last crate, we'll come over here and just get over top of it. Go 
get ourselves a point of reference out there to look at. All right, we're loaded. There's our track radar. Head will turn around. And away we go. All right, so this time I have uh, voice attack loaded, so we're going to see if it works. If my command I set up a long time ago still works. Get ourselves into a hover. Drop crate. And there it goes. Cool. So that's much easier because you don't have to take your hands off the controls and fiddle through menus. Just give it a voice command. And all that does is press the same thing. It opens my communications menu, and then hits F10, F6, F6, and F2 to drop the crate. Alright, so once we set down, then we can go into F10, F6, F6 for CTLD commands, and then F1 is unpack crates, and this will unpack everything that we've dropped in the area. So we do that. Except for the ammo truck over there, apparently. I wonder if we're just too far away, or if it only does one thing at a time. So let's go F10, F6, F6, and then see if we can unpack. Yep, there we go. So it only unpack one thing at a time, I guess. That's fine. There's our, there are our launchers there. There's our ammo truck to restock them. PCP over there. Track radar behind us. And our search radar right there. So the whole site is somewhat distributed. So if a missile blows up one of these things, it shouldn't take out anything else with it, making our chances of being able to come in here with a repair crate a little bit higher. And that's a good thing. We want to be able to repair these when they're damaged, not have to build a whole new one, because that's one crate versus four. All right, so our next thing is uh, being able to have that site be able to defend itself against incoming anti-radiation missiles. I'm just going to set ourselves down, and we're going to set up a Roland. F10, F6, F3 for AA crates, and then Roland, as you can see here, like I mentioned earlier, has a 3 next to it, which means we're need going to need to spawn three of these crates, and then drop them all near each other and unpack them when we're done, much like we did with the Hawk site, before we get one Roland. Now, as much as I love the spawn all three crates and then just hover them back and forth approach, I would be sitting here waiting for three minutes before I started moving anything, so it makes it, again, not as practical as I would like. Roland, it's crate number one. Try not to hit the black shark who has landed without landing gear right now. All right. Somebody's not used to having gear. None of the other helicopters have retractable gear. It's just always there. Alright, same idea, so we're just going to put these crates somewhere back here. We want them to be in range of our ammo truck. That's kind of the big thing, is if they're in range of the ammo truck, this they can respawn or restock, sorry, from the same truck as the Hawk site can. Get hovered. Drop crate. There we go. Worth mentioning, we can't, I think I mentioned earlier, we can't spawn crates when we're not on the ground, so if we try, we go into F10, F6, F3, and then try to spawn a Roland, nothing happens. We actually do have to be wheels on the ground. Now, we can be light on wheels, but I wouldn't recommend it most of the time. Your chances of dynamic rollover are far too high. So we'll just go in and spawn one more Roland. Lift up. There you can see in the top right, Vespid is deploying the same idea. Protecting the Hawk site with Rollins. They're setting up closer to the water. I'm setting up back here to save myself trip time. Drop crate. Let's 
So you can see how much faster that is when you don't have to set down at all. It's a shame you can't do the entire process from hovers. You will learn the uh, F10 radio menu, like the layout of it, and which keys you need to press in which order to get things. And it'll just become muscle memory after a while to go through and spawn another rolling crate. We learn a lot of bad habits in DCS because we don't have to care about the airframe's maintainability. We aren't responsible for taking it to the crew chief at the end of the day, saying, look what I did. We don't have to fly this exact airframe tomorrow. And we don't care if we overstress things because it's we just spawn a new one. Drop crate. For the last one, you might as well set down, but you can, because you're going to have to unpack them anyway. So we'll set ourselves down. I also have a command for unpacking. Unpack crate. There it is, right next to us. Now we need more of these, so we're going to go drop three more crates and unpack them nearby. Drop crate. So there's an example of if you drop from a higher... Oops, yep, exactly. If you drop from a higher altitude, it drops directly below you, and you immediately start picking up the crate again. And if you don't move away fast enough, which is amazingly difficult to do when you don't want to pick up the crate, you'll struggle to hover over it when you do want it, and then fail to move away fast enough and pick it up again like I just did. But that is a good point to bring up, that you can move crates around and relocate them as long as you don't unpack them. You just hover over them again wherever you've dropped them, and you can deploy them again. So this time we're going to get a little bit lower. Drop crate. Ah, and it's right over there again, right below us. Okay, this time we cut away in time. I've done that far too often, where I drop the crate from a higher altitude, and then immediately pick it up again. It ends up being slower than if I had just touched down. So get your hover altitudes down to a minimum, where you might run into that. Yeah, there goes our hawk sight, already shooting something down. Alright, so third crate we're just going to set down this time. Drop crate. Unpack crate. And there we go. Alright, so let's quickly check something. If we open F10, and then up here at the left side there's a little mouse cursor looking thing. Click on that, it'll lock the camera to your position, then you can just scroll in, you'll see where you are. This black circle that we're seeing right here, this is the range of our ammo truck. So really we're free to put things anywhere in this field and we should be fine. It should be able to rearm from this truck right here in the center. So this means that our Rolands are well within range. We can even set them further back or over here. We could set up another Hawk site over here, which we might do. Uh, and they can all rearm from this one ammo truck, which is fantastic. So now we have, there goes a Hawk missile. wonder what it's shooting at. Nothing. It's shooting at nothing. 
Now if we have a look at our web GCI while we're on the ground, we are here at Kasab. There is this uh, fulcrum here that's still alive. And then we've got a couple of frog foots coming in from across the strait. And then up here is another fulcrum. And you've got more things spawning in Iran that'll be making their way down eventually. So there's lots of red stuff in the air and not a whole lot of blue stuff in the air being, you know, the current time of night, it's 12.30 in the morning here. Not too many players on doing cap, which means that us logistics people are kind of responsible for defending Kasab at this point. We need to make sure that we have enough defenses to keep all this stuff at bay and prevent uh, us from losing Kasab. So that's what we're doing. Yep, both of these guys, that's Bell Dudes and Vespid, and those two Hueys, are just fantastic. Hello, Hornet. They're just fantastic pilots, and being that uh, DCS still uses a server browser, you get a lot of the benefits that you used to have in old games like, you know, World of Warcraft circa 2006, other MMOs before matchmaking became prevalent, where this is a fairly small close-knit community, and you'll start to see and recognize a lot of the names. How many missiles we've already launched? We've got one left on these launchers, and then hopefully that ammo truck will start to restock them. Speaking of ammo truck, we're missing something. Nope, there it is. It just moved away. Drop crate. Common high traffic, uh, limit one one, single lead, Hill parking, get a taxi two, two seven, gonna make right traffic for non departure. Common high. Drop crate. Unpack crate. There's another Roland, and that gives us three Rolands protecting our Hawk site. That's really good, I think. Oh, we've got an engine failure. Oh, um, did I get hit by something? Hmm. Well, we do. We have a fire shut off left engine. Look at that. Fire left engine, second discharge. There it goes. Alright, we get to put our uh, fire video here to good use. We've deployed all of our fire suppressant. We have nothing left because I didn't react very quickly. But our fuel line is closed, our engines are off, so now it's time to do some single engine operations because the hip is actually perfectly functional. Um, we still have a fire, perhaps. We might be burning to the ground shortly. We'll see. Anyway, uh, we've got emergency power on. Let's uh, let's see if we can just get off. Oh, you know what? I don't know if we're going to get off the ground with the IR suppressors and this weight. I don't think there's any way we're going to. Let's bring up our engine condition lever. Raise our free turbine RPM as much as possible. Anti-icing is off. Dust protection is off. We're pretty low on fuel. But we've got the hard points and the armor and the IR suppressors on, which means that we're probably not getting off the ground. All right, so as we start raising our collective, we should get, uh, we are actually, we're gonna be able to get up. Okay, cool. Now we've got emergency power for the right engine. That's great. We're not gonna be able to get out of ground effect, which is gonna limit our ability to do logistics, I think. 
see if we can hover high enough to pick up a crate. For now, we'll stay nice and low. Alright, CTLD. Let's just take a single crate to see if we can do this. Double A, let's take a Vulcan. Uh, we don't have one yet. Now, can we hover high enough to pick up that crate? we go. Probably still got a couple more degrees of collective here before we start to max out. I think we might be able to. We're still at about six degrees of collective. We are high enough. Not oh, too low. A little higher, please. Just barely. All right, we can load it. We can. We can just barely get high enough with our single engine. Watch that other Hornet. We're going to thread the needle here between the two of them. Try not to kill one of them. Because we can't really get high enough to fly over them anymore. So the hip is actually surprisingly effective still with just one engine, as long as you're light enough. The number you're looking for is about 20,000 pounds total, and that's pretty hard to achieve with the extra armor and suppressors and hard points equipped. You have to be very low on fuel to do that. I think the maximum takeoff weight, depending on the weather, is going to be around 22,000 pounds. Drop crate. Then we'll have to set down, sadly. Unpack crate. Nope, actually I've set all the way down. Unpack crate. There we go. Triple A. Get ourselves back up. Now this is where DCS tends to teach us bad habits, because the vast majority of people, if they had an engine fire, would probably just immediately eject and spawn a new um, helicopter. If they even know how to bother putting out the fire, because you don't really learn that stuff unless you're really wanting to know, because you can just get a new airframe anytime you want. You're not responsible for this. It doesn't matter. You don't have just one helicopter um, to, to work with. Some servers will give you limited aircraft, and then in that case, it, yeah, it might actually matter, and you'll want to learn how to do this kind of stuff, but generally speaking most of the time we're dealing with unlimited aircraft like we have here and so you just spawn yourself a new one in the real world we're responsible for these airframes we are the ones who would have to report to the crew chief and explain what the hell happened we would have um, you know machines that are down for maintenance for however long where they're not usable or where they may never be usable again because we overstressed them and didn't look after them and so DCS teaches us bad habits because we don't have to care about that. Drop crate. Now the thing to remember about single engine operations and helicopters in general is if you've got enough power to get yourself off the ground and into a ground effect hover, you've got enough power to go flying. So just by getting myself a few meters, like I'm three or four meters off the ground here, just by picking up some speed, you can see I'm now climbing. I have not touched my collective. And so I can actually get a fair amount of altitude here and fly an entire trip anywhere I want on that amount of power without touching my collective. Alright, that's our last one for the Hawk site, so we're going to set down. Drop crate. Unpack crate. There we go, another Hawk launcher. Now if we hit F10... Alright, a couple of things worth noting. So, 
Um, first of all, our transport truck has driven away because we've had some uh, damage to our, Hawks, our first Hawk site here. So it no longer is in range of all of the launchers. So we're going to have to drop another truck because we can't move this one. It used to be possible to move this with uh, combined arms. You could click on units that you had dropped and you could drive them around, but that um, there was a loophole where that could be abused to uh, harass people and the admins couldn't figure out who had been responsible for it. So that's been removed. So we're going to have to drop another transport truck in somewhere over here. And then we're also going to want to drop in a repair for this Hawk site because it's taken some damage. So let's go grab those two things. Um, while we're here though, because I keep forgetting about it. Let's drop some troops. So F10, F6, F1, and then unload is on F1. There we go. Now we get some infantry stinger man pads and stuff here. So that'll help a little. All right, so let's go repair that first Hawk site, and we'll uh, get another ammo truck for the second one. Try not to hit our Roland. Little redundancy is never a bad thing. If you're dependent on that ammo truck and like what happened here, it drives away, you can end up with a Hawk site that'll end up looking like this, but with no missiles and it won't be able to rearm, making it effectively useless. All right, so under our AA menu is the Hawk repair on F5. So we'll just bring that in. Hello, Tomcat. Tomcats. Both our Hawk sites launching. If I glance up at my web GCI, there's a few inbound frog feet and some other things coming in, so. Yeah, I think these sites will be pretty busy. Now, let's not land on the Harrier, as fun as that might be. Try not to land directly on top of him. Just come in and sit down right in front of him. Hi there. Alright, so let's set down right around here. Drop crate. Unpack crate. There, you can see the units move slightly when they get repaired. That basically just despawns and respawns the group. So they have full ammo again. They have full health, but they do slightly shift. So you want to be careful about how close you are to the launchers, for example, in case they clip into you and they respawn. But if we have a look, so now we've got a fully repaired Hawk site, which is great. But we need that other ammo truck still over here for the other Hawk site. So let's go get that. Almost dangerous flying around the launchers. Imagine if you got close enough to one, you could get shot down. Alright, so we're going to set it up somewhere out here so that it has a good chance of covering everything that we put out here. Now, I want to put it away from the launchers and the radar, but I also don't want it to end up on the runway, so I think we're okay here. I guess I don't need to do that. Drop crate. Unpack crate. There we go. Ammo truck. Now if we hit F10, now we've got the nice overlapping circles so that we could drop anything we wanted along this whole area. And you could put one over here on this side of the runway and you could start um, putting up sites over here as well. Load the whole area up. Now if you look out at what the other guys have been doing, they've got one set up over here. They've got one set up over here, got one set up over here. Like they're spreading things out the way that you're really supposed to. 
We've got stuff up here. Now these ones are a little closer together. They put a whole bunch up there. But you'll also see it's fairly common that people will fly all the way out here, for example. And they'll try to set up um, clusters of SAMs way out, out on some of these islands. Personally, I find that that flight is a bit too long, especially if you're going to bring 25 crates, because like, look how many things we have deployed here, knowing that this is three crates, this ADS, and Roland ADS is three crates. This was four crates for the Hawk site, and another four for the other Hawk site, and a couple of trucks, and then two more Rolands. Like, it's a lot of flights back and forth, so minimize your distances. All right, so I think that'll about do it for this video. Uh, we've looked at how you deploy different crates, different clusters of SAMs and anti-air defenses, uh, how they benefit from having the ammo trucks around to rearm them, how they can shift around, how they can be repaired, all kinds of different things. Uh, we've looked at how you can drop them while hovering, how you can spawn multiple crates and then just hover back and forth between there and your destination. Um, I think that largely covers what you need to know if you're going to set up defenses around an airfield that we own. The biggest thing is making sure that you set up enough defenses and then that those defenses have their defenses. So you need enough Hawk sites to shoot down incoming planes and not run out of ammo. You need enough Rolands to protect those Hawk sites. I could probably use a couple more. And you need to have some other options as well if things happen to get in close. So you need some IR SAMs and some AAA and so on to protect all this. Because the worst feeling ever in terms of logistics is to spend all this time setting up all these things only for a couple of frogfoots to roll up on Kasab, nuke your radars, and then take the airfield back. So defend your stuff, hopefully everything goes well, and then Kasab can be a safe place for people to spawn, take off, and launch the next phase of the mission, pushing across the strait over to Kashim Island. As usual, if you guys have any questions, or if you notice something that I got wrong or missed or didn't know about, or if you just have some information that I don't, um, please leave a comment below and I'll see you guys next time.